Hi, I'm Katie Sickman, Invasive Species Coordinator for the St. Croix River Association. And I'm Jeremiah Walters, the EIS Field Technician. And welcome to the second installment of the Scenic Shorts video series. Today we will be talking about purple loosestrife, an invasive plant that is common in the St. Croix National Scenic Riverway. Today we're going to be talking about purple loosestrife, some tips on how to identify it, some management and control mechanisms, and how you can prevent the spread of purple loosestrife in your neighborhood. Purple loosestrife is an attractive wetland perennial that was introduced from Europe and Asia. It can grow three to seven feet tall and can help compete our native wetland plants. Purple loosestrife grows faster and taller than most of our native wetland plants. Once established on a lake shore or in a wetland, it often shades out all but the tallest of its competitors and can replace large numbers of native plants where it becomes established. As native plants decline, so do the other species that depend on them. Purple loosestrife produce small seeds that are easily dispersed to wetlands via moving water, migrating birds, or in the cleats of muddy boots or tires. The seeds germinate on open, moist soil, creating first year flowering plants that produce many more thousands of seeds. Thus, purple loosestrife quickly creates large seed banks that make the plant virtually impossible to eliminate. That is why it is so important to remove the young plants before flowering if you can. This invasive plant has a spike of pink to purple flowers that grows on a square stem. The leaves are in an opposite arrangement in a world pattern. Individual flowers have five to six petals. Each healthy mature plant can produce two to three million tiny seeds annually. Flowers bloom from the bottom of the spike to the top of the spike from July to September. As Jeremiah stated before, these plants can produce two to three million seeds per individual plant, but they can also spread by fragment and root stems. They can also spread by boaters, water, animals such as birds, and even construction equipment can disrupt the soil and cause the spread of this purple loosestrife. There are various pinkish purple native wetland species that can be easily confused with purple loosestrife like fireweed, swamp milkweed, showy tick trefoil, joe pieweed, blazing star, among many others. It is important to distinguish between these species to prevent misidentification. For more information, check out the link. Traditional management methods such as mechanical or chemical application offer quick control, but require follow-up to catch missed plants and new seedlings. Avoid site disturbances that expose the loosestrife seed bank. Follow all label instructions when using herbicides. Destroy any removed loosestrife by drying and burning it or placing it in a landfill. Do not compost it. Acquire a free Wisconsin DNR permit for any herbicide work over water. On small sites, gently pull or dig small, young plants, especially if they're located in loose, sandy, or gravelly soil. On small sites, you can also cut the loose strife stems during active growth and immediately apply a glyphosate herbicide to the stumps. On larger sites, you can also carefully spray loose strife foliage with the herbicide, but make sure you avoid spraying native plants in the wetlands or along the lake shore. Something unique about purple loose strife is that it has a biological control, the Galarucella beetles. A biological control uses one organism to control another. These Galarucella beetles exclusively feed on and control the purple loose strife. These insects pose no threat to either our crop plants or native species, and once a loosestrife population diminishes, the control insects fly to find new sites elsewhere. This biocontrol is useful on any sites, especially large ones, and is necessary for statewide control. These beetles are easy to propagate and release. At this point, you may be wondering what you can do to help. Well, one of the most important things is learning how to identify purple loosestrife. After you've learned how to identify it, you can start reporting it to EdMaps. If you need any help with verification, you can ask your local AIS coordinator or Minnesota or Wisconsin DNR. Another thing you can do is help prevent the spread, and you can do this by cleaning off your equipment, whether it be your boats or shoes. You can encourage your highway department to stop mowing the plant. 
you can curb local use of purple loose strife, and you can also watch for small populations and remove them, if possible, before flowering. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the second installment of the Scenic Shorts. For additional information about the St. Croix River Association or for more information about invasive species, visit the links below. See you next time.